Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to another episode of News Dose, where I give you all of the latest gaming news. And we are now in September, which means new Xbox Game Pass games. Microsoft did announce the Xbox Game Pass lineup for the first half of September, and we're starting off with a pretty strong start. Also, we got the PlayStation Now lineup as well, which is pretty good, so stay tuned for all of that and we will go over Xbox Game Pass and PlayStation Now. Also, the Xbox Series S leaked once again. This shouldn't even really be all that surprising by this point, but before we get into all that, we have plenty of other topics to talk about, starting with Final Fantasy 16. So this seems to have blown up online because Final Fantasy 16 may have just gotten a placeholder Twitter account, which means Final Fantasy 16 may be getting an official reveal very soon. Yeah, that would be huge, but is this actually real? This is starting to become a thing here recently, where these supposed Twitter placeholder accounts pop up online, and we saw this with Perfect Dark and F-Zero, which both ended up being fake. So this very well could just be another fake Twitter account where somebody's just trolling, and that wouldn't really be all that shocking at all. With that said, regardless of if it's real or not, there has been a lot of Final Fantasy 16 rumors here recently. Right now, it is believed that Sony has struck some kind of deal with Square Enix to get Final Fantasy 16 as a timed PlayStation 5 exclusive, which is actually very possible considering Sony and Square Enix has done this several times in the past, including with Final Fantasy 7 Remake. Now, if all that is true, then there very well could be an official reveal soon, but the question is where? I'm thinking this could be at the PlayStation 5 event, which is rumored to be in the first half of September. But if it doesn't show up there, the other event I would be looking at is TGS 2020, which leads me to our next topic. The TGS 2020 schedule and lineup is starting to come together, and it's sounding pretty good so far. This event will be from September 24th to the 27th, and a lot of big publishers will be there, including Capcom, Sega, Square Enix, and even Xbox. Actually, Xbox will be doing the opening showcase for TGS, so that will be very interesting. I know Xbox fans have been wanting to see more Japanese games come over to Xbox, so this will be the perfect place to show they've got some new Japanese games. Hey, maybe we finally get to see Elden Ring, which I believe Xbox has the marketing deal for that one. That's not all though because there has already been some very exciting games announced that will be at TGS including Resident Evil 8, Babylon's Fall which kind of just vanished, and the one I'm really excited about, Balan Wonderworld. Truly, I think Balan Wonderworld is one of the best looking next generation games so far, and it looks like it's going to be a really fun game. It of course is a new game that is being made by the original Sonic the Hedgehog creators, and that alone is very exciting. I am very curious to see Babylon's Fall though because, like I said, this game has just kind of disappeared. This is a Platinum Games title and they're excellent developers, so I have a lot of confidence that this will end up being a great game, but for whatever reason, we just have not seen much of this game. It was originally planned to be a PlayStation 4 and PC game, but I do wonder if they are going to shift development to make it a PlayStation 5 game as well. I certainly hope so, but we'll have to wait and see. Nonetheless, TGS 2020 sounds pretty good so far, and we may get some nice surprises there as well, so let's look forward to that. Now, TGS 2020 is not the only event happening in September, because Ubisoft is also holding their own event on September 10th. In a new trailer, we did get our first glimpse as to what to expect at this event. They did put up a new trailer revealing Hyperscape, Watch Dogs Legion, Rainbow Six Siege, and also their new game, Immortals Phoenix Rising, previously known as Gods and Monsters. So I mean, this lineup doesn't exactly sound amazing, but that doesn't mean that there won't be other games to show up here as well. They of course have Far Cry 6 and Assassin's Creed Valhalla releasing soon, so I would expect to see some gameplay from both of those. Maybe they show Rainbow Six Quarantine since we still don't really know much about that game, and also the Prince of Persia remaster did leak not long ago, so they could announce that there as well. There have also been some reports and rumors of a Splinter Cell VR game, and when are we going to see more beyond Good and Evil 2? For me, I personally would love to see a new Rayman game, but that's probably not going to happen anytime soon, so I guess we'll have to wait and see, but September is really starting to sound like a pretty busy month. We have a Ubisoft event to look forward to, TGS, and possibly a PlayStation 5 event as well. 
And of course, as always, stick around and I will keep you up to date on all of those as we get more information. Moving on though, I do have some quick Nintendo news, but very good news. So Nintendo did change one of their eShop policies for the better. So basically in the past, if you pre-ordered a game from the eShop, Nintendo would charge you as soon as you made said pre-order. Now though, it appears that will no longer be the case because now you can pre-order a game and they will not charge you until seven days before the release of whatever game you pre-ordered. So what this does is it allows you to cancel a pre-order you made as long as you cancel before the seven days of that game releasing. So that is great news. Maybe you pre-ordered a game because you got all excited about it and then suddenly you got some new information you didn't necessarily like the sounds of, so then you can just cancel it. In fact, that feature would have probably been nice for Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. I know some fans were very disappointed when they announced it was not going to have local co-op, so when an announcement like that is made, it's nice to have this cancel feature, so good job on Nintendo's part here. Let's talk about Xbox Game Pass though, because yes, the first half of the September lineup has been revealed. Do keep in mind this is only the first 15 days of September, and they will announce more after that, which as always, I will let you know about as soon as they do get revealed. But we are going to start this month off with a strong lineup. We have the Jackbox Party Pack 4, Hotshot Racing, Destiny 2 Shadowkeep, Tell Me Why Chapter 2 and 3, Resident Evil 8, Tohu Luna Knights, World War Z, Star Renegades, Disgaea 4, and Crusader Kings 3. Now actually, Crusader 3 has already been doing very well, as it's currently sitting at a 91 overall score on Metacritic, so clearly that is a great game. And then if you're looking for your big AAA games, Destiny 2 and Resident Evil 7 should keep you busy there. The thing about Xbox Game Pass though that I have always personally loved is the fact it gets you to try all of these new games that you may not have tried otherwise, and that's why I'm looking forward to Hotshot Racing, which is a day one launch title for Xbox Game Pass. It very much looks like a spiritual successor to games like Virtual Racing, so I'm excited about that one, and Tohu Luna Nights is a very well received Metroidvania game that's been on Steam for a little while now. So we got some quality independent games there as well, and then to round that off with Tell Me Why Chapter 2 and 3 from Xbox Game Studios and Don't Nod, and Disgaea 4, which I know for a fact is a great game. Yeah, Xbox Game Pass is killing it with another really strong lineup for September. I don't expect this month to be as good as August, but I'm really pleased to see a good lineup here. With that said, pay attention to the picture on screen which shows which device each is available for. Unfortunately, games like Disgaea 4 will only be on PC, but I do find this addition to be very interesting. Disgaea is a very good and wacky tactical JRPG franchise, my personal favorite being Disgaea 4 actually, and to see it go to Xbox Game Pass for PC is already great news, but I'm curious if Xbox is going to try and get these games to come to the console as well. This very well could be NIS America testing the waters to see how well their games can do in Xbox Game Pass for PC, and if it does well enough, they could finally port these games over to the Xbox console. This is a highly praised JRPG franchise, and even if they're a little bit niche, they're still great games. Nonetheless, the first two weeks of Xbox Game Pass for September should be a lot of fun. Also, PlayStation Now revealed their September lineup today, and it's actually a pretty good lineup as well, so let's take a look at this. PlayStation Now will also be getting Resident Evil 7, and it will be getting Final Fantasy XV, WWE 2K19, and Observation. Yeah, so there are some pretty good games here. It may not have the same quantity as Xbox Game Pass or those day one releases, but there are some quality games here. One thing I find interesting though is the overlap on some of these games. Final Fantasy XV, Resident Evil 7, and Observation are all in Xbox Game Pass as well, so I'm thinking that these publishers are figuring out that they can make some money with these subscription services. This is also why competition is such a great thing. PlayStation Now has been improving over the last year, and while I don't think it's nearly as good as Xbox Game Pass, they have improved PlayStation Now a lot over the last 12 months, so we are definitely seeing progress there. I would like to see them try to get some day one launch titles and maybe release some of their first party games in full time rather than limited releases, but it's still an improvement all around. On to our last topic though, the Xbox Series S leaked once again. Yeah, honestly, I don't even think Microsoft is trying to hide the fact that this thing exists. 
This time though, the leak comes from Xbox themselves. So apparently somebody bought a new Xbox controller and it came with a 14 day trial for Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, which if you look closely at this, it says right in the fine print that this code will work on the Xbox One, Windows 10, and Xbox Series X and S. Yeah, there you have it. Yet another leak for Xbox Series S, and the truth is, I'm pretty convinced the Xbox Series S was meant to be announced already. The original rumor was that the Series S was going to be announced way back in June, but because Sony did not announce the PlayStation 5 price, they delayed this announcement to August. Well, as we all know, Sony once again did not announce the price for the PlayStation 5 in August, so they once again delayed this event to possibly September. And really, if Sony once again does not announce the price of the PlayStation 5 in September, we may just wait another month for this thing to be officially revealed along with the Series X and the Series S price. It's just been a very strange lead up to next generation consoles with E3 not being here and Sony and Microsoft playing this game of chicken for a price advantage. But once again, if it wasn't already very clear, the Series S does indeed exist. It's just a matter of when we officially hear about the Series S rather than if. Anyways though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.